Happy Valentine's Day. Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus loves you? Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Tolbert. Welcome to Sunday School Made Simple, your online community of Christian education teachers and students of the Word. Thank you for joining us as we continue to explore the Word of God using our Precepts for a Living commentary edited by Dr. Melvin Banks Sr. and it's based on the International Uniform Lesson Series. Remember to ring the bell at the bottom of this video to subscribe to our show so that you don't miss out on any new lessons and do do that like button, hit that like button for us too. And teachers and serious students of the Bible are invited to subscribe to PreceptsForLiving.com for complete lesson plans, videos, the Word Made Simple, and additional resources. And when you subscribe, you'll have access to precepts on your tablet, phone, or laptop. So go to PreceptsForLiving.com and get those resources today. Each week, we make Sunday School simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the Word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. Are you ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for Jesus. We love you. Kisses on your face, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. We are continuing our quarter, which is based on the biblical theme from the New Testament of being called by God. And in this unit, we're studying lessons all about women. Our lesson title today is Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple, which explores Mary Magdalene's faithfulness and loyalty to Jesus throughout his ministry, death, and resurrection. Let's explore the text beginning with our lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will discern Mary Magdalene's motivation for committing her life to Jesus, appreciate the sacrifices Mary Magdalene made in order to follow Jesus and embrace a lifestyle of wholehearted discipleship. The first set of verses for this lesson is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Soon afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. There are two key points from these verses in this lesson as I get my keys. Mary was a faithful disciple and Mary, along with other women, supported the disciples. Let's examine the background and context of these verses to better understand our lesson. Luke the physician is the author of the books of Luke and Acts. He tells us that Jesus was traveling throughout the region of the Sea of Galilee and preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. Many women were following him, including Mary Magdalene. Jesus delivered her from demonic possession and cast out seven demons. After that, she was a faithful disciple throughout his ministry. Mary was from a well-established town called Magdala, and that was at the foot of the mountain near the Sea of Galilee. There were many other women who were disciples of Jesus, but Mary Magdalene is remembered for her faithful devotion to Jesus. She's not to be confused with the sinful woman who anointed Jesus in Simon's house in Luke chapter 7. Scripture does not support that Mary was a prostitute. In fact, 
Mary Magdalene is so noted for her leadership that she is one of the few women mentioned in all four Gospels. Luke chapter 8 informs us that Jesus' ministry was financially sustained by Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, and other women. When Jesus welcomed women in his ministry and they supported the ongoing ministry of Jesus. Well, let's read the next set of verses, which is one verse from Mark chapter 15, verse 40. And again, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. Oh my goodness, we are fast forwarding to the crucifixion. Oh, I almost forgot my key point. Here's the one key point from this verse. Mary was with Jesus when he died. And as I was about to say, we fast forwarded to Calvary, to the cross, to the crucifixion. And we're now reading Mark's gospel. In verse 40, we're at the foot of the cross. Most of the disciples had run. They were terrified. They deserted Jesus when he was tortured and crucified on Calvary. We can understand their fear. To be associated with Jesus was to be friends with an enemy of the state. Jesus was crucified as a criminal in the most shameful, humiliating way possible. And this was a warning to anyone who would stand against the authority and power of the Roman government. Peter denied Jesus three times and the other disciples, they ran away. But Mary Magdalene and some of the other women did not abandon the Messiah. John, the beloved disciple, was at the foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of Jesus, according to John's gospel, while Mary Magdalene and the other women mentioned in this verse were watching from a distance. Mary was devoted to Christ in life and was just as devoted to him in his death. She followed Jesus despite the risks all the way to his execution. And afterward, she planned to anoint his body for burial, which was, that was a common practice at that time. Well, let's read the final set of verses from John chapter 20, verses 10 through 18, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Then... They went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go find my brothers, and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I've seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. 
there are two key points from these verses. Mary saw the resurrected Jesus and Jesus sent her to tell the disciples the good news. Mary Magdalene is the first person to find the empty tomb. But when she looks into the tomb, his body wasn't there. Instead, she encounters two angels. Mary was sobbing and in a state of shock that she couldn't find Jesus' body. The angels ask why she's crying and she turns around to see a person whom she thinks to be the gardener. She can hardly see through her tears. But when Jesus calls her name, Mary recognizes his voice and Mary calls him Rabboni, which means master. Rabboni is a title of respect for religious leaders. Jesus tells her not to cling to him or perhaps stop hugging me. <laughs> She's so overjoyed that Jesus is alive. Mary is the first person Jesus sent to tell the good news of his resurrection. Mary was devoted to Jesus in life, and she was devoted to Jesus unto death. He was not just her teacher. Jesus was also her Lord. Because of her diligence, she was rewarded with being the first to see Jesus in his resurrected glorified state. Well, our lesson today about Mary Magdalene traces her devotion in Jesus's ministry and at his resurrection and crucifixion. I should say crucifixion and resurrection. <laughs> she was the first witness at his resurrection and we can appreciate Mary's devotion because we too are devoted followers of Jesus. Yes. Well, that's what's important to know. How should we feel in response to today's lesson? We should appreciate that following Jesus is worth it. We love Jesus because he first loved us. He's delivered us from sin and saved us from the power of sin. We don't have to live lifestyles of habitual, continual, deliberate sin, as it says in 1 John 3, 9. No, we are free to worship God and free to serve him. And this is why we love him. So he's given us peace of mind. We appreciate all that Jesus has done for us. He humbled himself to become a man. He was born to die for us. Oh, what a savior. And so like Mary, we appreciate all that Jesus is in our lives and we serve him with our whole heart. Well, that's what's important to feel. What should we do in response to today's lesson? we should embrace a lifestyle of wholehearted worship. <laughs> it doesn't get any more simple than that. We worship God with our whole lives. And what does that mean? Mary Magdalene gives us a great example. It means that we're responsible with our time, our talent, and our treasure. It means that in all we do, we glorify Jesus. So let me ask you, are we spending time loving others or arguing with them on social media? Are we caring for the poor and isolated or are we ignoring them? Are we spending time every day reading the Bible and talking to God in prayer? Or are we wasting time with endless entertainment and social media? We want our lives to count for eternity. So with this goal, we will glorify God by taking care of every moment and making sure we are worshiping God in all that we do. Well, that's our Sunday School lesson made simple. We discern that Mary Magdalene was motivated by love, gratitude, and faith in committing her life to Jesus. 
We appreciate that Mary Magdalene risked her social status, her resources, and her life to follow Jesus. And we follow her example by embracing a lifestyle of wholehearted discipleship. Let's be devoted to our Lord and let's receive the reward of his presence and blessings in our lives. Yes? That's our text for today. Now, let's talk about how to effectively teach this lesson. Don't forget to begin each lesson with prayer. Pray that your students will have receptive minds and hearts and spirits as they learn from God's word and that you'll have clarity, wisdom, creativity, sensitivity, discernment, grace, all of that as you pray, as you teach. And pray that students will apply what they learn to their lives. Pray, pray, pray. Just can't pray enough, can we? (laughs) And now hook or open this lesson by asking your students, How do you show your loyalty and faithfulness? And also, teacher, do download the In Focus video from PreceptsForLiving.com and invite students to answer the question at the end, which is, can we trust God to care for those we love wherever they are? Ask children, what do you do special for your teachers to show them you care about them? And ask teens, How do you honor your teachers or mentors? After that discussion, transition to book or present the scriptures by inviting volunteers to read the scriptures, either in portions at a time, as we model here, or all at once, depending on your preference. And ask them what stood out or resonated with you from these verses. Get your students thinking, tracking with you. We want them to be personal with this word. We don't want them just to sit there and and not pay attention. So do ask them these questions. And teacher, do do study the in-depth paragraphs which explain the scriptures. And one of those in-depth paragraphs I want you to take a look at is, one second as I turn to it, that in-depth paragraph is refusing to leave the scene. And that's when Mary and the women who traveled with him refuse to leave. So that's a very, very good discussion. So make sure you look at that. And then transition to look or explore the meaning by answering the questions in the lesson. There are so many, so choose a few from in-depth, search the scriptures, and discuss the meaning. One of those great questions from the lesson is this. What might these women, especially Mary Magdalene, reveal about what it means to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Great discussion. Then transition to took or next step for application by inviting a volunteer to read Liberating Lesson, which highlights building relationships across cultural differences. Good discussion. Good content. Oh my goodness. I know you'll enjoy that. And then for application, for activation, ask each person to read this paragraph silently and invite them to write down their reflections as they hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Journaling is such a good spiritual discipline. Why don't you try this as a final exercise? Ask students to think about how their lives have been transformed as they have followed Jesus. Maybe have them write it down and Think about how that experience that impacted their life journey, how they may share their testimony with someone else. And then, teacher, pray for your class and end the class in prayer. Be sure to let every student know how much Jesus loves them. And now, let's talk mailbag. And welcome to Mailbag. And once again, Minister Allen is joining us on this Valentine's Day to talk about the women in ministry. Thank you so much for being with with us, Minister Reynolds. We really, really appreciate you and your expertise and your devotion to the Lord. Oh my goodness. I want to ask you a question because, you know, it's often downplayed and overlooked that there were so many women 
involved in Jesus' ministry. They're, they were with the disciples. They were following Jesus, supporting his ministry. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because it's so encouraging to us to know that we were included in those early days. Absolutely. And we get it right here in our scriptures today that not only was this story about Mary Magdalene, and certainly she was there. She was one of the faithful disciples of Jesus. She followed him from the time uh, she got delivered all the way through his ministry at the cross, at the resurrection. And, and she was certainly a standout even among the disciples because of how close she stayed with Jesus, her devotion and and um, and being the, the first witness of the resurrection. But we he have here especially mentioned in our scriptures today that there was Joanna, the wife of Chusa, you know, Herod Stewart, who was there, that there was Salome, that there, of course, we know Mary, the mother, it says mother of James, but that's Jesus's mother, Mary. Uh, and then we also know about Martha. We know about Mary and Martha of Bethany. You know, we know about um, the, the other women who are around Jesus, some of them are named and some of them are not. Uh, yeah. And every time he shows up anywhere to do ministry, we know that the women are coming to him. The women, woman with the issue of blood, the woman caught in adultery, the woman at the well. These are all people who their testimonies end up impacting people all around them. And in the case of the woman at the well, we had a whole lesson on her doing ministry as an evangelist. And, and one of the roles that the women mentioned in today's scripture take that we don't think about or talk about, but is very practical and very tangible was that Jesus and his disciples lived as homeless people, right? Jesus himself was certainly homeless. We know that Peter had a family, he had a home, but he left it to follow Jesus. We know that, uh, you know, James and John, the brothers of thunder, that they had a, a, a successful fishing business that they left to follow Jesus. But as they traveled from town to town, if you can imagine, people didn't really travel around that much uh, in the ancient world. They, they didn't have a reason to go anywhere except for Jerusalem on high holidays or to visit other family members or relatives. And so because of that, as they traveled, they had to rely on the people who were in the towns to take care of them. And a lot of those people were women. We hear about them in today's scripture. Joanna and, and Salome and Mary, these are people who, who took care of Jesus financially. They took care of the disciples in Jesus in terms of food. They helped to make sure they had shelter. And they supported Jesus's ministry because without that, he would not have been able to stay so many days in, Cap in Capernaum or, or in Bethany or in, in, in the places that he went. And so uh, it's an important ministry of the church and certainly an important contribution of women from the beginning that it was their resources that helped support the ministry of Jesus himself and how much more so many of our churches today. Amen. Amen. As always. <laughs> amen. Good information. Thank you so much for answering that so, so well. And would you read our keep in mind verse for today's lesson? Absolutely. And our keep in mind verse comes from the book of Luke, which we read today, chapter eight, verses one through two. And it says this in the New Living Translation. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. And again, that's Luke chapter 8, verses 1 and 2 in the New Living Translation. Woman of God, you are vital to the ministry of the Lord. Jesus needs you. <laughs> Go run and tell the good news. Have a great week. <laughs>